Hello, 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 hello. Third time's the charm. Uh, <laughs> March 2023, third month. Let's go. We are starting to get out of the woods of the records that have been set because of the changes to the bounce pads and that sort of physics. We're going to be entering the era of the weapons changes, but there's not so many weapons maps and everyone's already bad with weapons anyway. But here we go. Uh, it was a good month. It was a good month, actually. Got a lot of good records. Up here we have the list of who did well this month. Forever Last, we believe, is cool. Uh, I am not 100% sure, but potentially cool. Made most of the maps that got reset and all of that. 76 records, incredible. 298 records set over the month. We've got 203 videos to review. So, Forever Last Clasps, Mui, Riffo, Nero, Nature, J Height. Can't remember how you do that one. WHT is a new player, but not new player trust, because that's cool. STR, Epic Fail, Amnesia, Shiro, Robotic, Ecas, Banano, Creature of HP, or Jaska, or the Pentagram Symbol. Dez, Absolute Legend, Malice, 2337, Matuka, Uchi, Azarus, Ferris, Plaza, Terminator, Vert, and 18. There we are, total 298 records, as I said, and it's been pretty good. So let's head over and start watching a few of the first ones. Um, if you've got any records that you think I should definitely take a look at and like really take a look into, then let me know because it's uh, I'd like to. I'd like to because I know I skip some of the records, but if there's like a 20 minute record and you think it's it's a really strong run. Uh, I'll take a look at it. I just don't want to be spending time like looking at 20 minute records when the record c could go down with a clean run down to like three or four minutes. You know, I don't want to like just sit there watching, watching fails. So unless it's a super difficult map, that's like impossible to clean up. But yeah, uh, let me know. It would be good to take a look at some of those maps. Also, if there's like a battle between two players and it w uh, there's quite a few videos of it, then let me know because I'll separate those in the playlist so that they all stack together. Uh, at the minute, I just do the playlist in order of upload and don't really pay attention. I literally just go through making a queue. That's the reason there's... So there's 203 videos and I can only do 200. YouTube can do playlists up to 500 and I think even more, but it breaks a bit after 500. But the queue can only do 200 and then it breaks. So I couldn't do it all in one one playlist because I make it in the queue. Um, yeah. So, some good records. Here's Robotic. I haven't seen Robotic in ages. I haven't actually seen Robotic last month. But yeah, it's good that there's been some uh, records being set. It's good that we're getting some solid records on the maps that got reset. There were a lot less new maps as well this month. That did help bring the total number of records down um yeah there's also a few times where um Mara didn't run the recording thing for a few days which does bring down the number of records because if it'll only record the current world record which is why we have 200 so 298 records that record is taken if you if the record is beaten multiple times in one play session, it only takes one at the end of the play session. But after the play session, it counts it. And then it only records after the record has been stale. So the record hasn't changed hands for 24 hours. Um, and it'll only record the newest one, which is why we have the discrepancy between 298 records and... Uh, 203 videos but that's like quite a lot and they're probably going to be new new maps i also doubt that there was any like huge changes of uh of route in between but if there were changes of route and you have the demo for anything that's got some fancy changes of route also hit me up because i'll happily record a record a demo and bung it into something like this Oh yeah, there were some broken videos as well, weren't there? I saw a couple as I was going through. 
I vaguely saw a couple that were just like black screen, and I was like, ah, these are gonna be black screen, aren't they? <laughs> but I don't know if uh, Mario took them out. This will be an interesting one. I don't know if it's this run or a different one, but I believe Nature said that he got a very clean run on this. But I feel like it was later in the month than this video will be. This video was, what, second? So this one's actually set um, in February. I just do them based on the upload date because it's easier. It means I can just go in and make the playlists and not have to worry about it. It's fine because if I don't do it, who's going to complain? And like, if I don't, if I stop doing this, uh, this record review stuff, who's going to complain? And if I uh, continue doing it, it'll just be on the the next month's one. So it's fine. It is a bit of a shame when good vi good records don't make it into a video because it literally means that someone broke it within 24 hours and it's like, uh, <laughs> I still need to have a record that actually makes it into a video. I've not even technically had a record. Good thing Zenotic doesn't have collision damage. Uh, fall damage is disabled for race mode or CTS mode um, but it can be enabled it's just we disable it which is a weird one because it is as far as I'm aware kind of the only um, the only race game mode that does disable pretty much entirely disabling damage which like yeah most Quake 3 maps will give you the bio suit, which is the damage disabling thing. And like, there's a, a map I was playing this morning, which in Quake 3, it's the current, um, it's K2S I believe, or K2N. And it's the current, uh, current walk up map. And it's super sick, but right at the start, it gives you a mega health and um, a red armor, 100 armor. Pick that 100 armor up twice because it respawns pretty much instantly. And you will not die until you get past the first section. After the first section, it stops having... Um, you get a bio suit after the first section. So it's like, And that gives you a ton of rockets. <laughs> and it's like... I'm like not going to die... <laughs> I'm pretty sure you could get through it without even picking up the second um <clears throat> without picking up the second armor and potentially without picking up armor at all if you only used I think the minimum number of grenades is two. You'd want one grenade to start off with and then you're gonna need a grenade at the end of the section to get up on the map. It's a good map. I wanna get my time down. I've got a twelve minute time because I absolutely like had to whole ass for the one section but then I couldn't even beat it <laughs> like I now know what to do and now I can't execute it because I'm terrible but oh well this Timcon Tim Con map looks pretty good I can't remember why I didn't participate in the Timcon land grinding in Quake 3 but I didn't so I don't know these maps cool Lou was uh popping up a few times it's interesting doing this i never realized how how much we go through phases in the game of like playing a map a ton um because i sort of hop on every day and just play whatever's going but then doing this you like see oh that was a week and then the next one was a week and then the next one was a week and then maps like this are horrible it's a really awkward one for for mapping like that because do you put the speed where people spawn and then you have that horrible noise? Or do you put the speed where you have to walk into it to pick it up? 
and then that's annoying because you've got to walk into it. You can't just start your run. It sort of only matters for Xenotic because most people are playing Quake 3 offline. And I'm pretty sure you, even online you can't hear people picking up the uh, the item pickups. I don't think it makes the sound of the people picking it up. Online in these is always weird. With various things. Like this. For Zodotic, once you've hit a button, it's always open for everyone on the server, so only one person has to do it. Quake 3, they do reset. Uh, so this is old rockets, I believe. This must be old rockets, because it's only been very recently that we got new ones. So this has probably been reset. I think we've done the same... I should have probably checked. Resetting all of the re we uh, weapons stuff. Because we can't guarantee it being faster. But yeah, online. Online plays strange. It'll be... It's interesting to see what different games do about it. And especially games that are... Um, like, it'll be interesting to see what Momentum Mod manages to do about it. Because I have seen... I can't remember what game it was. But it was a specific speedrunning game. And every every interaction is client-based. And so things will phase through. Trackmania does it, actually. All of the things are client-based. So if you knock a door open, it's client-side. If you press a button that activates something, it's client-side. So a ghost can just literally phase through a wall. Because for it, the wall isn't there. Which is an explanation for why ghosts can walk through walls. Because when the ghost died, that wall wasn't there. The only problem is when it walks through a wall and it's like, it, it was there. <laughs> Not a great explanation for ghosts. That was a really clean run. It was just like, super clean. That's kind of most... That's, Nero has one of the weirdest circle jumps going. Like the super over the top... Like, not over the top as in, like, too much, but over the top of the head flick. It's like he starts doing a football throw in, and you're like, whoop, and go. It's, uh... It's certainly fast, though, because that was a pretty quick, pretty quick getaway. That gap is really difficult to do, actually. I, I had a look at that gap last week, and I was like, oh, I can totally do that. Nah. Nah, that, doing that gap is super difficult. You have to be going really fast to be able to make it. Oh, that's an ugly pre-run. No wonder people go so fast on this map. This map's got a really strange start that's really, really difficult to do. Uh, and like the spacing just doesn't work out. And I tried it in Quake 3, the spacing just doesn't work out. Yeah, you need like 2k before telly, it's huge. Huge, 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 huge. But now we've got the keep speed teleporter. Uh, it's not as bad. I remember this map. This map was quite good. Dancing around the walls, getting right up there. Very nice, very clean. Oh no, I would hate this map. I haven't played it, but I just know that, yeah. Absolute spacing nightmare. I would. I'm the master of missing every down ramp. Sixty nine. Nice.
back over to the DFWC map. Still one of those strange things for the, the map pool in Xenotic that I've never quite understood why we do. Defrag World Cup maps for Quake 3. Jesus, that's the route. God damn. Um, yeah, Defrag World Cup maps from Quake 3. Relax running. Defrag World Cup maps from our own. Not relax running. Even if they're, like, super easy to do. Although I did play DFWC 2018-1 this morning. God, that map is difficult. All I wanted to do was make the slide, and it's like, okay, yeah. I... I... I thought I could do it, but I'm pretty sure that even if I'd been as good... Even if it was, like, this month's... Or well, this year's World Cup instead of the first World Cup map I played and pretty much the first defrag I played. Pre strafe hood. Pre me actually knowing what slick is, because I realised that I literally didn't use the slick at the time. Um I'm pretty sure that on that map I wouldn't have been able to make Like it it's one of those things where I wouldn't have even been going for it until fourth or fifth day. Would have had about eight hours on the map. So, I'm happy with the time I got. Improved a little bit. I'm probably going to go through, put 20 minutes or so into each of the Defrag World Cup maps just to get a time on the ones that I missed after I got annoyed and literally couldn't beat them. Uh, maybe I'll have to put more than 20 minutes on the ones I literally couldn't beat. Because <laughs> if I couldn't beat them in 2018, I probably fairly difficult maps I wasn't terrible but I do know that the second map of 2018 is one that I found really difficult and I know I've played it before uh, I've played it since then and just like breezed it is this the one where you like jump straight out of the map just around this corner yep that was much cleaner. It was much more of a, like, exit from the map thing the last time. Yeah, I, I actually changed a couple of my settings recently, in-game. Uh... To what's a weird choice? Uh, yeah, I changed a couple of my settings to make them kind of like closer to this. Oh yeah, instead of yeah, you could wall strafe the other side. I think there's a few. That map seems to be one that can be heavily optimized because every time I see it, it's like a huge difference in play like the first time it was literally like watching a run where just getting the shortcut was the hard part and now it's like yeah you get the shortcut every time but then you've got to optimize it but then some yada 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 a lot that goes into awesome. it cheers for the follow I forgot it does the noises when you're uh Even though I've not got the the pictures attached. Does the noises from the chat box I use. This is a pretty sick map. I love the neon look. It's really it's really good with the outlines. They're some of my favourite uh some of my favourite maps are the ones with the outlines. Because it makes it so easy to... Oh, what? Da -da 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 -da. Oof. Is that slick or something? The fuck happens here? Ah, it's slick. Oh, we just got yeeted. The fuck happened there? Oh, there's slick on the outside. Is there weapons runs? Yes. Combo maps. Very rarely. 
very rarely combo maps. But there's, uh, yeah, there was a string of a couple of rocket maps. Towards the end, we're going to see a lot more rocket maps because we've just had a change in physics to rockets. It's made them faster. And, yeah. There's not a ton of rockets. It didn't quite come in. This is March. Didn't quite come in in time for the end of March. And because they only did a couple of maps, I think it was only all of the Crouton Rocks maps and a Defrag World Cup. There was only like 10 or so maps that were actually uh, actually changed. No, new version of Zonotic didn't come out. It's just we've been changing... Um, we've been changing a few physics to make certain maps work better. Like this map wouldn't even be possible before. So what happens here, go down the slick, this was all possible. Now here, this this big purple area is something called a velocity pad. So, you hit it, and you see how you just keep the speed, but you're now going up. Before we didn't have these, you would have been slowed down, and the best way we could have do it would be to go into the map and replace this from regu for regular bounce pads and... They would literally just give you reckon regular speed and you'd have to take like three bounces to get across it. Which is crap, so we wouldn't have had this map. Um, yeah, most are taken from Defrag, but there are some Zonotic specific maps. Anything that says Ash in the name. Uh, a fair few cool maps are remade ever so slightly to make Zonotic work better. Because cool does play Zonotic. So some of these jumps might even be like custom built. It... So, on the one hand, it is a shame, but the thing is, with the, with the weapons... So, changing the bounce pads is, is really good. Um, because we didn't have that feature. That's adding a feature that means that we can take more maps, and it can be used in Zenotic. That is absolutely perfectly fine, because it doesn't edit bounce pads themselves. It just makes... Velocity pads actually exist. And I think it changed some behaviours in bounce pads, but for the better sort of thing. So we're not too fussed about that. The rocket changes make rockets feel better. They aren't specifically to get it closer to Quake 3. It's to make rockets feel better. And it does a really good job at that. Rockets always felt weird, they didn't feel consistent, they now feel a lot cleaner, a lot more consistent. It's great. We've already ruined the game for having just, like, Quake 3 settings. Because rockets, so rockets in Zenotic can be detonated at any point in the regular game. You can use alt fire to detonate them. Um, which means that you can literally just like shoot yourself up and keep climbing. It's brilliant. I wish we had maps that you can actually enable it. Apparently, Des has said before you can enable it. Okay, that's the line I need to take. I had a good good run on this map, but I wasn't able to finish get over that section. Um, yeah. So we've already ruined rockets by taking that feature away. The Crylink is just a BFG. The Crylink in Zenotic has uh, Crylink in Zenotic has a pull feature, so it'll pull you towards the uh, the shot, which is great in CTF for getting up to like 600 speed straight away. But it doesn't exist in XDF. Very really annoying. <laughs> Yeah, you can't, it's usually to say, I think the default is to have, like, Quake 3 style weaponry in Defrag, but you can enable vanilla, uh, vanilla balance. Which does have less push force, but, like, we could make it so it has push for, proper push force, obviously. And able to detonate, but it's super sick, like, go have a look at, um... Have a look at some clan arena from Dodger or something. I don't know if he's got any in his frag recent frag movie. I can't think about it. I can't I can't think of any specific moments. But I'm sure if you scroll through the frag movie, there'll be a few great like 
saved himself from falling off the side of the map. It's it's happened in Duel before. It's really cool when it happens in Duel. There you go. Here's a weapon map. Most of our weapon maps, to be fair, are full rockets. This is old rockets as well. So he has to crouch to be able to gain any height. Which I think you still almost have to do. But you get shit like that where you like fire a rocket and it just does nothing. And then speeds like this where you literally can't gain any more speed off of rockets. So you end up just doing really fast strafe. Which, yeah. Yeah, clearly hacks. So rockets are terrible for this video because once you've crunched this through three levels of uh, like YouTube, even when I watch this in 1080p, is crap. Our class has just been absolutely decimating rocket maps recently. Guy's an absolute legend in CTF though, so it, it's it's been an interesting thing. Me coming from the dual side of things and then watching a few other players come from dual and PvP side of Xenotic over to. Um, over to Defrag, even if, like, I know Clasps has been playing Defrag for ages, but, like, really taking it seriously for a little while and grinding some great runs. It's been interesting because seeing, seeing that that CTF level of knowledge comes over. I mean, think, like, Packer and Mirio. <laughs> Look at any maps that they've got insane times on, and it's like, Yeah. In fact, if you want to see some rockets detonated early, just go watch, um, and how... If you want to see how incredible Xenotic's weapon movement skills are, Mirrorfication on YouTube, there's 11 or 12 episodes of it. And it's Mirio Frag movies, and just scroll through and find some uh, CTF caps. Guy's incredible. Really good um, XDF player. In fact, I believe he's got records on this month. Only a couple. Nice. Nice. Here's a map made by Mirio, but played by Riffo. There was an interesting question raised uh, the other day. Are these newer players that are coming in now, like Riffo, Stra, um, WHT, are these guys going to be able to beat Dizzy this year in Defrag World Cup? Now, I have a theory that Dizzy fake nicks. Because there is... I, I don't see how Dizzy can cannot play all year and then come back and absolutely dominate like he must get rusty and then he it's not like there's a few people who come back and play a little bit like knight knight's playing other games most of the year not playing xenotic but if he's gonna take seriously xdwc he comes back for the month before xdwc plays a bit Oh, yeah, yeah, Desi's Dizzy's ult, that's right. Hate that map. <laughs> really don't like it. It's not even the start, that's just annoying, it's just like, always hit everything. And don't hit any down ramps. Just bonk every corner. Yeah. I remember my first XDWC. I'm pretty sure this is now fake. But I believed it when I first heard it. I heard that uh, Dizzy plays... Dizzy has terrible internet. Can only play once a year. Lives off in the fucking Canadian mountains or some shit. And plays offline all year. Just has a million offline world records. That was when I was young, dumb and naive. And just saw this guy who absolutely dominates and was like, holy shit. And someone said that. I was like, oh, right. But theoretically, it's a possibility. There have been people who do that in uh, in Quake 3, but it's kind of 
more expected because there's nowhere to upload your records. If you play offline in Quake 3, there's obviously there's nowhere you can just share them and you just post your records. You can, you know, record a video, post them, send the demo in the Discord, whatever. But a lot of people don't, you know, and because online and offline is so different in they're not they're not so different you can compete between the two but in terms of like in terms of the feel i'm not very good at the game and i can feel the difference right i can really feel the difference between online and offline not strafing but in uh in weapons and i kind of gave up playing online recently because it was like working out finding a server <laughs> Just to play the uh, DF uh, DF comps map, it was just easier to. Since that's literally all I play, <laughs> unless I'm either anytime I open up D, uh, Quake Three Defrag, it's to play the Defrag DF comps map, or to play a map that needs to that I need to see how it works in Quake Three. To see if it's broken in Zenotic, if there's like a line that should work, and I'm like, this should work, but it doesn't. Like that is really awkward on the uh, on the non-slick version. That that ramp, the really big one, because you're supposed to double jump it. We don't have double jump ramps in Zenotic, so yeah. Can you imagine? Dizzy's just grinding offline. All of these changes are coming in for uh, for the maps right now. And he's just frantically updating private servers and stuff. Trying to make it work. Downloading git patches and all of that. Just going, oh! Was it not working? It is sick though. I mean, like, to completely prove how good he was he went and won the Xenotic uh, Defrag World Cup and in the same week came I think 17th in the Quake 3 Defrag World Cup and placed a you know placed a good time in a couple of different places he could have definitely had quite a good overall ranking I think if he decided to play the whole thing but I know from what Knight said about 20 uh, yeah it was last year's or the year before 2019 was it 2019 2021 or maybe no yeah what Knight said about the 2019 Defrag World Cup, which coincided with the Defrag World Cup for uh, Xenotic, Knight said it was a nightmare to grind both. So in 2021, when they coincided again, he didn't grind both. That was it. That was it. I knew there was something to it. I was just trying to work out the dates. With XDWC being uh, every year and Defrag World Cup being every other. Be interesting to see when um, Momentum mod hits because it's going to be a, Def a Quake 3 clone effectively. They really are pushing for like a clone. Um. It'll be interesting to see if they do Momentum Mod World Cups. And also because Momentum Mod's going to have all of the different sections, are they going to do a cup for each one? I know that World Cups don't really exist in CS and, um, CS and TF2 and all of that. But would they also be... in? It, it would be interesting to see a World Cup for them where like in defrag world cup we have a strafe map and a tech map and a weapons map uh you know and different styles of map 
if it were to just have maps. Oh, it's way quicker to just go through the teleporter now that it's a, a keep speed teleporter. Damn. Wait, is this the same map? Oh, I might have accidentally added this map to the pool twice. We won 41. Oh, no. It's the same. Oh, no. It's not the same map. It's just the same start. Oh, we can't see anything because it's going so quick and these textures are so dirty. <laughs> Madness. This map's tough. There's a few sections where you've got to really tightly turn. Yeah, High Pikmin will be alright on this. The thing is, I have to run these at like low settings. Because it's like, if I, if this, if YouTube would do 1440p 30 FPS, that would be perfect for me. But I can only do it at 60 FPS, and then I have problems. My internet can't do that while streaming, while, <clears throat> you know, while everything's popping off. It's annoying. It really is annoying. And I need a drink. I'm going to hydrate. Yeah, Momentum Mod will be interesting. I don't think it's going to kill Quake 3 Defrag, because Quake 3 Defrag has existed for too long. And because a lot of people... It, it'll be a weird one, because a lot of people will be like, oh, well, I don't want to leave the records that exist in Quake 3 Defrag. It's like, but you don't really have a records-keeping software. You know, you can only set records online, but everybody agrees that online is trash compared to offline. So most of the best players don't play online. Whoops. <laughs> but I think that any game like, um, like Xenotic is going to see barely any decrease in player base, really. Because the the reasons to play Xenotic compared to something like Quake 3 or whatever, it's... Uh, yeah. It, there, there's many reasons to play Xenotic. I know there'll be people who... thing is, there's people playing Quake 3 that are like, well, I don't see the reason to play Xenotic. And it's like, yeah, but I don't see the reason to play Quake 3 most of the time because I play Xenotic. And that's kind of the thing. There's a lot of overlap between the games and a lot of people who will pick one and then play others for specific reasons. Much like Things like Trackmania, you know, there's uh, there's currently a tournament going on in Trackmania United. Most people will be playing 2020, but people are playing United still because it's got certain things that you know, 2020 doesn't have. It's gonna be an it's it's gonna be an interesting little while, especially since Momentum Mod is definitely more aimed at the I think it'll kill the source source runs community. Or well, not source runs, but because source runs is more the full game speed runs of games like Half Life and Portal. But I think it'll kill off um 
it will kill off the the higher end community of surf in CS. Certainly CSS. CS Go or port, you know, transporting into CS2, which is going to be a very interesting thing for CS Go. Um, if CS Go just completely disappears overnight, all of those records are going to be invalidated because different physics engine. Um. Yeah, I think, so the reason for CSGO Surf to exist is pretty much because it's the one you can play while you're waiting for your mates. CSS, I think, will mostly convert over to Momentum Mod, especially since they are playing Momentum Mod. It'll only be, I think it'll it'll be gradual, but I think as soon as a lot of the major players start playing Momentum Mod and setting good times on it, and they get a feel for they yeah they get a feel for the fact that one you don't have to play the map that everyone's playing you can just pick whatever map you like and invite your mates to it um don't have to worry about servers being up don't have to yada 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 i think it will go certainly there tf2 same sort of thing. I think the high end of it will go away over to uh, Momentum Mod. But that the the general player base for TF2 will still exist because there'll be people who just want to play, uh, play around. I hope there's some sort of solution for public lobbies in Momentum Mod. I know we're completely off topic of the Xenotic runs that we're watching. But yeah, I hope that there's some sort of public lobby type thing. Because the reason I play relaxed running in this most of the time is because I can't pick a map and want the map to change regularly. It's relaxed for me less because of the actual map that's being played. But because if I don't want to play the map, I can just like tab out for 10 minutes and the map will change. Uh... Whereas if I have to pick a map or I have to choose when the map ends, that's the that's the other thing. Because I could always just do a random map generator. That's something I've done in Quake 3 before. I've just, you know, pulled random, uh, picked random maps, used random map pickers and stuff like that. But... having to choose when to go on to the next map. Yeah. I don't know. So it'd be, for me, a public lobby, and then if I like the map, and I want to play it for more than 20 minutes, I'll just go on to a single player. I don't know they're going to have a, a lobby system where like your mates can join you. That's going to be quite good, because that'll mean that I can just, like... Have a look what my mates are playing. <laughs> just go and join them. Oh, hey, what are they playing? I'll just go play that one. But yeah, it's, gonna be, it's, it's a good time. I'm glad that there are more non-vehicular-based racing games. Because I did... Previously, I've been against car-based racing games, but I'm very much now think it's it's vehicular racing games need to. They still need to exist, of course, but specifically, like just like tone it down a bit. There's too many of them. We need more first-person shooter, by pedal racing games. And bicycle racing games. I suppose that is a vehicle. Bike racing games are weird. They're difficult to do. It's the reason that um, Descenders is not really a racing game. It's a trick game. With combo system rather than... Uh, rather than like timed. But it's still pretty fun to play fast.
I think it's just difficult to figure out what you're going to do for movement. Because you can have like an OP level of movement, like Xenotic is with bunny hopping. But... And strafe running and stuff like that. But you need to like balance that with other things. Oh, I like maps like this. I like slick combo maps. Where you use slick to gain speed and you have to gain as much speed as possible. You sacrifice some time on the slick for gained speed. Whereas maps like this, you still want to take sort of the most direct route. In most cases. You just want to take the most direct route. I don't like that one. Don't I? I at the very least like maps like that. Have I previously said I don't like it? Okay. Apparently I don't like that map. It's a good job that I can never remember any of the names of any of these maps. <laughs> like, oh, I like the look of that. I should play it in the next month. Which map was it? Oh, I don't know. Oh yeah, the world record makes it look easy for all of this. If you somehow this far into the video and you haven't played this game before and you're like, that looks easy, I'm going to go take the world record. Do it. I dare you. Pain and suffering will befall you. And a hell of a lot of quick grass, apparently. What the hell happened here? I've had these maps for ages. Why is there so many of them? This might have been one of the times where Morrow uh, forgot to run the uploader for a little bit. Because then it goes into, like, map name order each day that the uploaders run so if it's not run for a few days and there's a a bunch of records on similarly named maps and there's a lot of cool quick grass like i think there's at least 20 plus you've got rockets slick regular <laughs> i do like this map i do like this map Tough map, try to get the spacing right and also keep the corners being cut, but yeah. I'm pretty sure there's broken slick on it. That the sort of lighter coloured grass is supposed to be, uh, with like the blue tint is supposed to be slick, but. Nano zoom in. Ooh, you could tell from the way that he was. It, it's a strange thing that you can kind of tell what someone's thinking as they're moving. And like the way that the Nano's movement was there was like, oh shit, I'm going to hit my head. That pre run is so difficult but required to go very fast on this. And then you just like cut the whole end. Nice finish. Nice finish. Sick. A bit of slick built in. It's interesting with these maps, because these maps will have been made with VQ3 and CPM in mind. So some uh, sometimes sections of these maps will be built to have the slick serve as a spacing thing for the... <laughs> Sorry for yawns. Um, yeah, built as a spacing thing for the VQ3 players to land on. 
and then sometimes you can just manage to go outside and take the uh, take the slick. Oh, nice! We managed to vote. Stupid bloody grunt noises. Make the Quake Three players feel at home. So it sounds more like Warsaw though, for some reason. Skate maps are pretty good. I actually want to go back to the start of that video, because is that the one where you get a... No, it's not. Okay. Next. I heard noises of a Hagar, but I wasn't particularly paying attention. I don't know why, I actually... <laughs> I really like the look of maps like this. I don't know why. I really, really don't know why I like the look of maps that just don't that have the those textures. I think part of it is that they're super really um They're really obvious where everything is. Ramps are orange. And... Like, regular bits are... Uh, grey. And... It's got just enough texture to it as well with the, with the grid lines. You can, one, tell how fast you're going. Kind of visually. But also you can see where the wall starts. Because sometimes with completely flat textures, you can't see where the wall begins and ends. Yeah, feature perceptions. Feature perception is really important. And it's sometimes lost in Zenotic with the, like, the slight difference between the engines, um, Z, effectively Z fighting, except in Zenotic, usually things get flipped around compared to Quake 3. So sometimes you'll have, like, a thin, transparent layer to say, this bit is slick. And it doesn't show up in Zenotic. So it's really good to have different uh different coloured things. Even just making the wall texture a half shade darker than the um than the floor. Just to like see what's up. Here's a combo map for the uh, for visiting boss who was asking about weapons earlier. Jesus Christ! Well, that was aggressive. <laughs>
this map's super tough. Like they they make it look interest uh, make it look easy in the world record, but the square edges, the uh, the double jumps that half the time you land just too far into. The annoyance of going too fast. That's cool. I like that. Boom. latest five i remember this one from last month it's a map with a lot of uh strategic escaping of the map and then using oh, i was so close to the top These are some good records. I haven't really said anything about them because I've been uh, n neglecting my job, I'll be honest. Yet more quick grass though. That's the key takeaway. A lot of quick grass. And a lot of clasps on quick grass. Clearly got his football boots on. Although it's quick grass slick, so probably taking the football boots off to slide better. Oh, did the slick versions of quick grass just only just get added? I thought we had them all. I'm sure I've played these maps in Slick before. Or maybe we only got some of them. Alright. To be fair, I thought we had all of them because you can just set SV underscore friction zero and immediately get a slick map from a not slick map. Talking of slick, it has been interesting seeing when... Um, when ACC Riffo and STR joined they all, all, there was a couple of other people as well doing it. 
They just wanted to play slick. Like it, that was it. That's all they cared about. Uh, and I think it's a Warsaw thing. Warsaw is a much faster game because it doesn't require you to slow down ever. And you can gain speed off of walls. But they, uh, yeah, they were just playing slick and it was, it was a lot. But now they're playing everything and weapons as well. It's super cool to see. I do hope the Warsaw race can get maybe a little bit of a revival, maybe a small cup or something going, but unfortunately doubt it. Yeah, just ran out of slick maps. It's not like if you vote something anyone's ever going to say no in Zenotic. <laughs> we'll just agree to whatever vote goes through. I've decided I'm going to try and do at least one map a day of my old, like, crap runs. Oh, there's a hilarious one, because the, cause there's basically no anti-cheat whatsoever in uh, Momentum Mod at the minute. Someone managed to work out a way to get SV Friction to... Um, to carry over when you disable SV cheats in Momentum mod and yet still got beaten in defrag despite having slick <laughs> still got beaten by a defragger without slick it's like uh, <laughs> really and the other guy who hacked a time and I can't remember exactly what that hacked hack time was but I hacked a time and then someone just went on and beat it yeah just like yeah defrag I think the key thing was that they did SV fr the SV friction one I think it was on a uh, a weapon map so they went really fast for the strafing bit but then just completely fucked up the, ro the rockets and then after the rocketing bit the defrag had still had speed and now was going as fast as slick I am awful at rocket maps. I, I've i got to be honest, half of it's the fact I don't like full rockets. Uh, but I'm... I'm really bad at full rocket maps. I'm good at using rockets to my advantage when they're limited. So I gained quite a lot of time in the XTWC 2022 5 map. Um on the rocket section because I used them I, I, I gained a lot of speed I used them really well but I'm really bad at using them when I have infinite of them for some reason like I just don't know when to use them and when not to use them I'm always like spam spam oh no I've lost a ton of speed and now it's even more confusing because the rocket changes are coming I'm trying to get better I am trying to get better but I'm not a massive fan of full rocket maps. I like combo maps when I play Quake 3 Defrag. I've decided I need to actually play. Like I've said a couple of times, I'd need to... Yeah, with the new rockets, it's definitely better. I understand it better. But it's still... Still doesn't quite... Like, even... so. Quake 3, City Rocket, still don't like it. You know? And I think it's... I think the thing is... I'm really bad at spacing type stuff. And figuring out what the hell to do with spacing. Uh, you can tell it's a new map because you just broke the world record and then goes straight again for the actual record that we're going to see. So you know it's a new map. <laughs> yeah, I'm really... I'm really bad with spacing type things and with uh, rockets your spacing is just different every go round because every tiny little adjustment 
makes more things like different and then you're you need to go really high and you don't get height or you need to go really high and you end up going really far uh, and now you can't get over the thing stuff like that I've watched Jessica run Brockets plenty of times. This is the fourth month I've been doing this. But yeah. It's uh... Brockets are definitely something I want to get better with. And I think I'm going to have to. Because... Oh, this map's good. I still haven't worked out the route for this map, despite watching this a couple of times. Uh, to have a look what's going on. Yeah, full rocket maps just aren't really for me. And it's annoying. I, I, one of the main reasons I made that weapons video for Xenotic was to try and stop people from doing full rockets and just using the bodge of saying, oh, well, we can't get over it with the correct number of rockets. Let's just have infinite. And it's like, it just becomes every single map becomes full rockets. Because as soon as you've got a rocket launcher, why would you bother changing weapons to any other weapon other than the rocket launcher? Right? It's pointless to have the grenade launcher if you've got a rocket launcher. And that just, just annoys me. I don't know. I'd much rather... Yeah, combo combo maps need to be combo maps. It's like when they ported the, I so I made, uh, uh, I can't remember what map it was. A HGB map. I made it work with finite rockets. It's a bit broken because you have to double the ammo given for one specific section. Uh. And if you get the grenade launcher, which isn't the fast way to go, getting the grenade launcher, you don't want to get it. You want to just slick harder. Um, if you get it, you get infinite because of instant respawn has to be enabled for it. But it, instead, we've got a map that's on there that's got no, no quad. You can't get the quad on it. And no... Um, and just infinite rockets. And as soon as you pick the rocket launcher up. Because in Xenotic... So maps that are spe weapon maps that are specifically made for Xenotic tend to be made to have infinite ammo. Right? They're just... They take the weapon away from you. At a certain point. Whereas Quake 3 maps. Tend to give you the weapon once. And then give you ammo later. Right. So they'll give you a rocket launcher. Then you'll stay with the rocket launcher. You'll still have it. You'll just have no ammo for it. But they won't take it away from you. Which means that when it comes to Xenotic. It never gets taken away from you. So you just keep using it. And it is a little bit annoying. I'd rather see. A bit more nuance. Go into it. With the weapons, but yeah, I know what I can do about it. I can submit the weapon maps myself, and it's the whole uh, well, why don't you do that? And it's like because I really don't have the energy right now to do do the uh, do the figuring out the conversions of them to make them work. But annoyingly, once they're on, it's not like we're going to change them for the most part. I've tried making maps. I really just cannot wrap my head around making maps. Part of it's the actual making of the maps. Like I've even in say Minecraft, I find it really difficult to like make a parkour map in Minecraft. 
like I've I've tried it before. Uh, even in with cu uh, custom server stuff that lets you place blocks just straight in midair, so you don't have to like build to make to the next block and then delete it. You can literally just like place a block directly underneath where you are. Yeah, Mui's done mapping streams. I've watched a few mapping streams. There's quite a good. Uh, there's a lot of people who do mapping streams for uh, CS and stuff. They tend to show their mapping streams. Still can't do that. Yeah, I just can't can't do it. I had one I the the closest I ever got to really learning it was when I was still playing duels. I wanted to make CPM three A Xenotic Edition. And I had some great ideas about what I was gonna do to change it, where I was gonna put a warp zone instead of a teleporter and like make it so that it works with Xenotic. Because there's a load of great jumps that you just can't do in Xenotic and it makes the map crap. And the scale's off massively. <laughs> so a lot of the jumps that you can do in Xenotic, because they're, they're just regular double jumps, are just too big. Which is annoying. But, uh, yeah. There's a lot of good maps. There's a lot of good maps. And I'm glad we've got mappers like Cool who are able to take that sort of... Like Quick Grass. Yeah, it's one very simple idea. But out of that one very simple idea, he managed to make 15 different unique playing maps. They look the same. They feel the same, but they play differently. Um, and they're even differently enough that I don't think you'd be able to put all of the quick grass maps, like with the flatland map, where you've got each of the flat colours, and then they're all just glued together to make one long map. I don't think you'd actually be able to do that with quick grass. Because they all... They all flow very, very differently. And they're clearly designed to work individually, you know. The start of the map is a start. You'll have some down ramps to give you some speed. These jumps, like, yes, on Slick you can make that, but there's jumps designed for different, different speeds of the mapper, of the player. Everything works really well, and it's all designed for how fast you're going to be going, so smaller jumps at the start. And a lot of the time you don't even notice, because you just carry speed all the way through them. That's the thing with the quick grass maps, you carry speed all the way through them. Uh, but then there's some other cool maps where you don't carry speed all the way through. And that's awesome. And I think it's great. The way that Cool makes those maps, that it's like, oh yeah, this is, this is a theme, and I've got a ton of maps and whatever, but they're all valid in their own way. It's just a shame that YouTube hates the textures, <laughs> especially when going at six thousand units a second on slick. I really don't like pre-runs. <laughs> this map's good, but... Th Wait, you do that? Oh, there's no way I'm making that. I thought it was the little box on the other side, actually. Was the, the way to get across, and I always thought it was pretty much impossible without skimming. 
Which is always a weird thing I find. Like, I, I can't get skimming into my head, no matter how much I play Quake 3. Um... That you can't, like, I just can't get it into my head. And the thing I also can't get into my head is skimming double jumps. There's times where I'll literally, like, I'll skim something. And because of that little judder, I'll be like, oh, I crashed. It'd probably be fine if I just played more. Oh, this, I don't know if this match might have been patched because of the boost panels but it is just crap like that getting across the first section is really difficult and then you just kind of hit things in other sections that makes it look really clean but that's like probably probably bouncing on two inches worth of clean run either side of smashing into everything Tatum T. I'm sure that map was designed to be split up because, like, it really works. Like, where we finished on that last one, we was a hole and you drop down on the longer version. So you literally lose all your speed and you just go again. And I'm pretty sure that map was designed to be split up at those exact moments. It splits up very cleanly checkpoint to checkpoint section to section it's like it's it is designed to be a series of segments rather than the segments being being there that one specifically the long one i like and the rest of them i for me, they're a bit short and a bit whatever, but I play them. I play them and I, I try. I try on every map, to be fair, unless I just get pissed off. Yeah, the, f the full thing could be very difficult, because I'm not sure if you die, you die. Because <laughs> on all of the checkpoint maps, even the ones that are really quite long, like the 45 second ones, you just die. Oh, this map sucks. <laughs> if you go a millimetre over the edge of it, you die. Uh, there is no, like, oh, I skimmed the edge. If your bounding box goes over the side of the, of the glass you can see, you're, you're done. You're gone. Because there is no, there's no overlap. It's not like you could sort of fling off the edge of the map and come back in. Just glues you down every lap. Just really. Uh. Play in the edge of it every single yeah he was so close i would love to see that in third person with the bounding boxes and the um and the actual like lines drawn on where the kill chamber is because it's a kill chamber it's not like a checkpoint thing it's straight up you restart and it's a minute long map just a straight line it's a weird one because that's like such an easy map to optimize but at the same time, pe mentally, pe it's mentally difficult rather than physically difficult to optimize. Because you have to be prepared to get as close as possible to the edge and then change. Because that will be the fastest way to do it. By That will give you the least number of changes. Unless you are, of course, a Taz. But yeah, I was going to say Taz. If you're a Taz, you'll do a swap every two jumps or something. That's what I tend to see when I'm watching Wizbot Tazes. It's like a, a swap every two jumps. And it's just going... Brrr. 
Which is why we have the smoothed version of Taz's. Because brrr is really awkward. Although the smoothed version sometimes looks really weird because the way they smooth it is by having the camera look in the direction of travel. Uh, so sometimes they do just look super weird. Like especially when you're kind of going fast strafing around a corner. Like if it was slick, a Taz slick would look super weird looking in the direction of travel. Because the direct, it would be like looking the wrong way. <laughs> oh, I thought we had a broken map then. What is it with all these maps? I've seen so many maps be uh, whole seconds. It's a strange thing. It's so good to be able to get that sub though. And we're back on Tat MT long. I swear this map's like been WHT's I think four records of the month. For like half the guy's records this month. Yeah, anything with rockets is getting destroyed in new rockets. It's it's a fact. The new rockets are faster. They are not only they not only feel better, but they are also just objectively faster. Uh Yeah. They're definitely a good thing. Although there was discussion with Ash talking about uh, having already made some maps with spacing for the old rockets. But, I mean, I said it in the chat. I feel like if the spacing has been designed for the old rockets, it will work well. The thing where the new rockets really come in are three... Um, Full rockets. Why did I say three? Next time you see the whole way you mine yourself and get up. Huh. Yeah, that was pretty easy to land cleanly on slick because I, I know I did it. I'm shit. <laughs> yeah. Mate, I mean... It might be... That that specific section, because it was specifically built for the old rockets and the old rocket spacing, might not work. But it's uh, yeah, it's certainly interesting. Uh, no, you couldn't land it without rockets. Without rockets, it was a very nice bit of spacing, actually. Without rockets, it was one bounce. If you hit the back side of the, um, of the curved ramp, or not curved, but diagonal, diagonal head ramp at the top, it would be one bounce, and then you would land cleanly on the slick, which was really nice. And then with a rocket, it was one, one rocket, no jump. Oh, 
obviously there was everything in between because if you didn't quite it was very difficult to perfectly line up everything and all of that Yeah, I tended to leave the rock, the rocket. I think I did it in my PB run, maybe the the straight away at the top rocket. But most of the time, I think I hit the roof, then shot a rocket off the sidewall rather than doing a rocket into the roof. It's a difficult one because we are going to have the changes happen and all of that sort of stuff. But a lot of the changes are going to be for the better. And of course, saying, oh yeah, let's not make any changes always sucks. <laughs> You think you didn't play that map? Which one? Cool mu cool wo or That's probably one of the first maps Des hasn't played. At least on RR. He's now going to go vote it. Next map. This map, oh, I just couldn't get this map the other day. Nowhere near world record, but like, it was this section specifically. I was getting consistent times through to this section, and that would just fall into the, into a hole either side of one of the, one of the landing points. Yeah, it's such a painful map. And then you have the chance of like, your spacing just doesn't land you on top of the box for the, uh, for the bounce pad up and you lose like literally half a second because <laughs> you have to land walk backwards hit the thing it's like oh could this not just have been like three inches taller of a of a bounce pad so that i just hit it every time no matter what that it was a really you know thick chunky bounce pad so you're always hitting it and my habit of any map like that I'll forget which side I'm supposed to go and I'll end up hitting my head. I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> Crap. This map's also a painful one. Really tight spacing. Huh. Rocket time! Learn your AD. I know how to AD. I have quite a good time on the map.
it's just difficult. Nice bit of Zed fighting water there. More quick grass. I wonder how many records would be, uh, like how many fewer records we'd have if we said we don't do videos for records until they've been, um, been on the server for a week. Not the records themselves, but the map. Like the first week, the map just doesn't have records. Yeah, March we got the quick grass flood. I actually did something. Let's have a look. So I've got a TXT file of all the records. So if I do quick grass, I find it. There are 64 quick grass. 64 maps have quick grass in the name. There's also this one, which is that 122 maps have cool in the name. That's out of all of the records. It's difficult to do that with these. So the way that I do the, um, that I make the record videos or make, make the playlists is I just go to Morrow's channel. Let's pause this and show you how this works. I mean, if you're this far into the video, you know, I go to Morrow's channel, go to videos. I scroll down to the beginning of the month, find out which day the beginning of the month is by looking at these. And I just sort of go to like, so it's the 10th today, so I should be looking for 10 days ago. So that one's going to be last month. Yep, 30th of March, so I closed that one. So we're starting on this one with seven days ago, and I'll press add to queue. And I will go through add to queue, add to queue, add to queue, add to queue. I'm not even thinking, I'm watching another video on the other side. That's why sometimes you'll get like four, it's always four maps that will be the same in a row. Because I'll go add to queue, 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 add to queue. Because it doesn't tell you that it's still in the queue. It's also the reason that this has exactly 200 videos. And then I have uh, part two. Or that's yeah, March part two. Because I can only do 200 in the queue at a time. So, yeah, I haven't worked out how to automate basically any of this yet. <laughs> the only automatic thing I have is I send Morrow a message at the start of the month and say, can you send me the information of the... Uh... Uh... Yeah, can you send me all, like the world record information, who's got the most and whatnot. And that's pretty cool. Cause he can just pull that from the from the server data for the month. It is technically wrong compared to the video, I'll be honest. Because I say can you get me the data? And he'll get it from date to date and it'll be from the first to the last of the month um, and yeah he could get the list of the videos but the way that I do the videos 
So the first videos of the month that I show you are from last month because the records were set last month, right? Yeah, that's the thing. It's difficult to get it into the playlist. It'd be great if YouTube had a really simple feature where you could just like reverse the playlists. Because uh, then I could use Morrow's default YouTube playlist of uploads and just go through it. But no, you can't. You can't do that. It's really annoying. So I have to do it the manual way. Yeah, it'd be difficult to get it into a playlist. If there was a way to just say, I want all the videos from this channel that were uploaded between this date range, and then I could just say the date range I want, that would be also great. If there's any JS hackers around that want to want to help out, it'd be lovely. That was a clean finish. Very little speed loss while gaining in just enough height to get over the over the lumpy bit. Yeah, the first month I did this, I had like a long. The plan was literally to um, to go through with. So I'd copied all of the links and then I'd got a long file and then I was adding the names, like manually adding the names. And then I realised how difficult that was going to be and I'm so glad I stopped doing that because we had 400 videos or whatever for last month. In fact, it was so bad that the second month, I, for one, I couldn't be bothered to name all of the files so all of the segments but also youtube wouldn't even let me name all the segments which is the point where i've now given up doing uh doing the youtube subtitles thing and all of that it makes things a hell of a lot easier for me because i don't have to stitch those together and change the numbers and do all of that crap and it means i don't have to use any regex so all I've got to do is I just paste the links to these playlists into the description, paste a link to Morrow's channel, paste a link to the XDF page so that people can join the game. And I should probably put a link to Zenotic. But yeah. I don't expect people to watch most of these. But... I don't know, it's a weird one, because I, I watch a couple of longer form videos that take, that are sort of just reacting to stuff, but most of those don't have this sort of like just chatting about nonsense in them as we watch, because they're like Mario Kart videos where every single record has an interesting story behind it. Plus, they're yearly ones, end of the year world records that stood at the end of the year sort of thing. And that's a hell of a lot different to random records set by random people. Some, sometimes, like, there's some records we've seen that have just been absolute crap because they happen to be set at ridiculous o'clock in the morning and then no one played the map. It was just a brand new map and, like, then no one played the map for a day. Your records are pretty good though, because you tend to play at times 
when people are on. And in general, maps tend to be uploaded at times when people are on. It's only sometimes um, Morrow will upload a map like right before going to bed. I mean, what have you got this month? How many records? Diz. You got three records this month. Cool Quick Grass 15. Uh, cool Speed 7. Both set on the same day, actually. Those two. And PHT-SM underscore run 2. Not sure if that last one's going to be in this month's uh, record video, but the other two have already been. Because they were... They were set on the 6th. And the last one's set on the 26th. So the last one might not be in, because I know Morrow missed a few days right at the end of this month. But I'm not sure if he got, got that one in or not. Look, Mom, I'm a pro. See, I've had two world records, but neither of them have stuck for long enough to actually be counted. And to be fair, I don't know if either of those two, re if any of those records would have stuck long enough to make a video. Let's have a look. So YouTube gets so confused about me with Morrow because I um prepare for battle. Oh my god! Why does it do that every time? Because I watch so many videos of Morrow's once a month, but at the same time, I'm not subscribed to him. So YouTube gets really confused about me. It's like, yeah, I'm not subscribing to a channel that uploads like upwards of 10 videos a day sometimes. <laughs> you know, 203 in a month. It's like four or five a day. None of your, vi none of your three world records got turned into a video. Wow. Your last video was from last month on Noturk. Yeah. Even 522 got a video. I've not got a video because I've not even had a record uh, stand properly. Like, at the end of a End of a session. Because I only play when decent people are online for some reason. I need to start playing at times when no one's online. I'm often like awake and doing things at stupid o'clock in the morning when nobody good's awake. Uh, except for like nature. I think that's the problem. The only time I've got a chance nature's always on. Yeah, make a make a secret slick map, like when uh, Trackmania players put um, secret finishes into their maps. That's like, oh yeah, if you just drive off to the side through this, these two trees, it's actually a finish line, and then put them into Cup of the Day so they can be guaranteed to get into Div One. I keep having to stop myself from going and like grinding Trackmania. Because for one, I'd want to get all of the author medals. And two, I'd get annoyed that I can't get all of the author medals. Even on all of the campaign tracks because some of them are broken because of physics changes. But you can wholeheartedly expect me to try and do some bullshit when, um... Yeah, so that record's not strong. You can see it's not strong because he instantly went for another run. Instantly set up another circle jump. 
or not a circle jump but a circle slick or whatever you want to call it so you can tell that record's not strong because he's gone for it again but it still stood long enough you know that it was unbeaten but we can't see what the time left is there could be literally 60 seconds left and it's 40 second map or whatever so we never know nice buffering though nice buffering Really fucking nice buffer. Yeah, he's doing the buffer route. That's what it is. Do you know what I got fooled by the other day? Not on April Fools. I got fooled by a really old video buffering thing. Like, not even joking. Like, the YouTube buffer now, it's that smooth line. Remember where it used to be dots when it would buffer? There was one of those in a video baked into the video it's actually part of the video for them to be able to do a uh do a remember to subscribe thing it's like oh well this buff well this video is buffering why don't you remember to su subscribe and they'd used the old one even though the video was definitely put out after the uh after the graphic changed and i can't believe i fell for it i was like oh fucking hell the internet's gone shit again Hey, if you remember to subscribe, I'll oh, fuck off. <laughs> I did like the video. I did like the video because it was entertaining. It was a good video. I've now ruined my YouTube by watching Minecraft fucking uh, challenges. Because I was looking for parkour stuff, Minecraft parkour stuff. Because you can't find any like commentated Quake 3 or Xenotic Defrag stuff, of course. Um, yeah, you also can't find any proper, any anything with parkour in Minecraft is not parkour. And I got clickbaited multiple times. Uh... By like fake challenge thumbnails that suggest that their videos contain parkour, but they actually don't. They're just like crap. Yeah, you need to remember to turn off things. The problem is like, if I watch a small amount of stuff, normally it doesn't matter. But the problem for me is that to get my YouTube back from a Minecraft binge is really difficult because there's so much content. That's the thing, it's it's the it's the sheer amount of content. Because to get it back like the amount of content that there is for uh for bike builds, there's a lot. But there's nowhere near as many bike build videos as Minecraft videos. And there's also like I can be in the mood for a bike build video, but I tend to not be able to just binge watch bike build videos because they are basically all the same right there are very few things oh hey we're back on this map time to like ah! again but yeah there are very few things then that change between bike builds especially the ones that aren't talking like asmr bike builds And they take time to produce. Most bike builds are going to take like a month to produce and they cost a lot of money. So most people aren't able to like pump one a week out. And then there's Minecrafters that can do do the video. And hey, fair play because I've watched the same 
the same Minecraft video idea done by like five different people. Because it's one of the reasons that I think Minecraft is so popular is because... So say you're playing a game with a story, right? You're playing a game with a story. If you watch the Let's Play, you're effectively having the whole story ruined for you. You might be able to play it yourself and do something slightly different, use different weapons or whatever, or it might be the, about the challenge for you to be able to beat it. But Minecraft, you can watch everyone play it because everyone's game is different. You can even watch multiple people playing on the same e same server in the same area because you want to see all the points of view. And there's very, very few games you can say that about, you know. There's very few games. I can't even be bothered to watch multiple points of view of... Uh, like when a few, a few CSGO majors had super special... Oh yeah, if you log on to our website, you can watch everyone's POV. Right? Uh, they had it for one grand final once. You could watch... Everyone in the game's POV plus some static cameras and all of this stuff on the website or in game even. And you could like join the in game watcher. And yeah, I couldn't be bothered to do that. But I'll watch a 30 minute video t effectively twice. Twice is usually my limit though for Minecraft videos. After that, it's like, oh, do I have to? <laughs> and sometimes it's like, yes, because I. I'll skim through the 10 minutes of interaction just to get to the juicy bit of that one creator that I wanted to watch for their video, specifically their video. But yeah, it, it is a weird one with the algorithm because, of course, the other thing is Minecraft's a very good game for advertisers because most of the massive Minecraft YouTubers are kid-friendly, so they'll get kid-friendly adverts. So that's YouTube takes a percentage so the more money per you know youtube's incentivized to give you that with the big advertising budget rather than the we haven't bothered to check because they only have like twenty thousand subscribers bike building youtuber that's very niche And then there's videos like this, where if you're absolutely mad, you will watch the entirety of this on the recording. <laughs> I that I know that sounds like a bong. I only realised it the other day when someone pointed out to me at work that this sounds like a bong. It's just because I've got a steel water bottle. Because I kept breaking water bottles that were plastic. So I was like, I'm going to get a steel one. I'm glad I did because it's dented to all hell. <laughs> uh, but because it's steel, it can't like do the sucking in thing. So it has to have a straw in it to get air in. So it's got an air straw and a drinking straw. Um, and then you just drink it like a normal sports water bottle. And yeah, it goes bubble, bubble, bubble. Bong noises. You could 100% use it as a bong, I'm pretty sure. Actually, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure how bongs work, but I think you could. You might have to, like, hold it in a specific way or potentially change the straw out for a different one so that it goes further down or whatever. And potentially it wouldn't work because the whole thing is steel, so you'd touch it, and if you heated it up, it'd be, like, very hot. <laughs> but it's nice because it keeps the drink cold most of the time. A little bit better at keeping heat out than plastic tends to be on a hot day. Obviously, if you were to actually heat it, it'd be a better conductor than plastic, but... In terms of, like... This bike is sitting on my desk at work. It's a bit better than plastic. It's sitting in my bottle cage on a bike ride. It reflects the heat a little bit better. 
Oh, you can tell it's a vert record when the uh, when the constant slappy slappy comes out. Pro vert record. Can't wait for next month's uh, complete onslaught of weapons. We haven't even got to the weapon reset yet, I don't think. When was this uploaded? 25th of March. Now we have got to the weapon reset, I think. Is this the map that got reset? And is this going to be the first good record? Because there was definitely one of the Defrag World Cup maps, I'm pretty sure this one, that got reset last month. And there was just some absolute junk records on it. This seems like a pretty clean one. I think the last record that was set last month was fairly good. You know, it wasn't incredible, but it was fairly good. The problem was that um, like right at the start there were some absolute just like walkthroughs. <laughs> Walking in at every wall. Nice run, nice run. Ladno. This one's got new rockets. So clean. Nice. You can tell how much that spacing and the, the uh, cut there helped because Mui was right alongside whoever they were next to and just absolutely blew past. They were right alongside going same speed and uh, Mui's just off. This start is so difficult. That little uh, lighter blue patch is a bounce pad, so it's like doable by anyone. But it's a set speed bounce pad, sets you back to 350 or whatever. After that, it's a pretty standard, like, make sure your spacing's right. You're probably going to cock up a few times, strafe map. But yeah, that start is just so rough. What? What on earth is that noise? Please tell me we don't have like record breaking. Can you imagine the game gets record breaking noise? Like every time you break a record, there's a noise, but then it's recorded in the demo, which means that at the end of every single video, it's like. <laughs> That would be fucking brutal. <laughs> Holy shit.
I would stop doing this series, or I would just mute the mute the audio. Oh yeah, I was going to try and sort out a way to do. Um... Wait, epic fail is cool. Forever last is a different player. Oh, epic fails Tuxor. Right. Oh, right. Beat new player trust. Ah, I see. I got confused because I saw the new player trust bit. And for some reason forgot that it doesn't turn up. Epic abs. Epic ads. I imagine if uh, Xenotic started having adverts like. Um, like Trackmania does. The Trackmania adverts are actually quite funny because when I first saw, oh, they're going to have adverts, I was like, oh my god, not this shit. Then they unveiled what the adverts were going to be, and it's like, so actually, even if I did pay for the Zenot uh, for the Trackmania version that you can turn the adverts off in, I actually don't think I would, and I use AdBlock as you can tell. <laughs> Otherwise we'd be having adverts every fucking video, which would be awful. Yeah. The, um... The adverts show community events. They're not actual adverts. And, like, I... If I was playing the game more, I'd want to know when the community events were on. So, like... Yeah. In fact, it's more annoying when you've not paid for the game that you're getting the adverts because you can't play in most of the community events because it requires the standard access to be able, rather than the free access, to be able to play on the on um, custom servers. So, like, a lot of the community events are off limits. It's like, well, fuck. Which is quite funny. Because I thought, when they first put adverts in, they had a deal with a company um, to put adverts. And then no one seems to have paid them since. So they just haven't done anything. And it's like, oh, so these big banners, they're just going to advertise. Like, they either just say Trackmania. Or they can tell you when the next community event is. And they never changed. That was the key thing they said. They're like, it's not going to be moving. It's not going to change during your run. It might change when you reset, but it's not going to, like, change during your run and make you look at a thing that you didn't know. It does potentially mean that lineups don't work as well, but there's not quite so many lineups in uh, Trackmania where you're using banners and stuff to line up with. You tend to tend to either line up with a bit of the stadium or you're just lining up with actually what you want to drive into or you know where you're going you're like oh yeah I've just got to aim for that lamppost and just to the left of that lamppost this absolutely brutal map zero checkpoints you just die if you die The permanent waypoint that seems to be on this map for some reason. Every time I see it, there's a waypoint stuck up there. And I'm pretty sure the waypoints are user specific. So it's like, why does everyone put accidentally put a waypoint up there?
Nice slicking. This is a nice run. That's a very nice run. We're seeing these maps not in slick now. Now we've seen them in uh, slick so much. This the one with the. I oh, know we've seen this map already. No, it's not. It's one of these maps that has an absolutely ridiculous jump over the top of half of the map. Oh, that was nice. Getting the little step uppy bit. Right. Go to part two. The last three maps. Nice bit of slick. Oh, that was clean up there. Looks like quite a difficult part with uh, of multiple levels of different uh, different ramps to hit. Looks very difficult to hit the right one at the right speed and like not bonk the next one. Yeah, super tight spacing, but that seemed to work out very well. The spacing for the whole of that. I don't think it's going to be possible to clear that whole last section. You're going to have to just eat something. You're coming off of such a tight corner, though, that's the problem. And you're going to need, like, that very last section, you are going to need so much speed to completely clear it. And he was only halfway up. Here we go, though. The last is a rocket map. Super sick. Boom. Thank you very much for watching. If you've watched the entire thing, you're absolutely mad. But yeah, there's a hell of a month. Nearly 300 records. We'll tidy it up next month. Hopefully we're going to have some more rocket records next month. Um, hopefully not too many, like, crap records. Just placeholders or anything. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Go get some records. You're all mad lads. And uh, see ya.